Uh, maybe, uh, maybe the other questions the other can questions also be answered. Answer. Uh, Doctor? Uh, as we we get in touch with the Doctor, um, there's an issue on the special needs uh, students. We wanted first the candidates to register and in the form there's a provision where somebody is stating whether they need any special attention. It will also be done uh, well after registration is completed. Normally what we happens when the students are in service at the school, we normally meet them at the school on an appointed day and the time where we discuss uh, how the council will be able to accommodate them and explore how they can be accommodated. So after the closure on 26th, we would be able to compile a list of people who need special attention. And thereafter, we shall conduct them individually and make arrangements on how we shall be able to meet and see how far we can be able to accommodate them depending on their needs. All right, thank All right, you. Thank you. That, that, that would include left-hearted uh, candidates. Those ones are taken care of at the venue. Yes. They are left-hearted. So they should not, there should be no call for alarm for that. They are desks, uh, uh, specifically designed for left-hearted candidates. Um, with regard to standardizing the conduct of all examination. I don't know exactly what that means uh, because we have guidelines that are applied by the Kenya School of Law in the conduct of uh, uh, oral examinations. Of course, you cannot be asked the same questions uh, that everybody else is being asked because that is that that do not be an exam anymore. But the character of the questions is the same and we have guidelines for that and i'm sure the school has shared them with you why is it expensive to do remarks because the law says so unfortunately it is not us who came up with that that um amendment or, or that that law it has been there for some time we found it there in 2015 when we started administering the exam I think it was intended to be a discouragement. Uh, that's that's in my view. I don't know the reason, but that is like now until that law is changed, um, there's nothing I can do or anybody else can do because that is in the in the law now, and that is what we are required to apply by every citizen of Kenya, including the Attorney General's Office, which is our supervising ministry and the National Treasury. We cannot excuse any person for not paying for that service. Remember, it's a service. And because our law permits us to charge for that service, we can't do otherwise. We have to obey the law. All right. but And we are law-abiding citizens of this country. With regard to the CPC and penal code for the... for 101, only the penal code is allowed. The CPC is not allowed. Only the penal code, a clean copy of the penal code is permitted. Clean copy. Um, in terms of structuring the questions, well, the ATP examination is like any other examination. You do not start with number one and then go the other way to five. If number one is very difficult, you can start with number six. So your number six becomes number one, but it will be it will be identified as question number six. So any order, there is no prescribed order of doing the exam. You don't even have to start with a compulsory question. No, you can start with any question depending on how, how well you can respond to the question. That the candidate is a, is a technique of, of um, answering exam. You start with the one that you can answer best. Then follow with the next 
second best, third best, the one that you can answer least, the one you are struggling with, that should be the last one. But the questions must be identified on the book on the answer booklet as they are identified on the question paper. So, so if your question five is number one, then it will be question five, not one. Because there's a question one somewhere, which is compulsory. So the structure of the question does not change, but how you answer them, that is that is uh, personal discretion. Um, I didn't get the one of, um, but I got the one of setting and marking and everything else. I don't know whether the, the questioner wants us to use the same person to set to mark and do everything yes, uh, the that di different persons for the question uh, the, the question was around uh, why why it is that you are using different people to teach then different people to set and then different people to mark so that to them it, it causes a discrepancy in the final result <laughs> Kenya National Examinations Council does that, or the national exams, that's how they are done. The teacher is not the examiner, he's not the marker. Professional exams are done that way, the world over. The teacher should not be the one setting the exam. At, at, at the university level, those, that's academic, uh, and, and uh, that's the, uh, the, the approach that universities have adopted. But for professional exams, the teacher and the examiner should, and the marker should be different. To, that is a, a mark of, of quality okay. assurance. And remember, the school is mandated by law to teach, Kenya School of Law Act. The school does, is not under the Council of Legal Education in terms of what it does. Its mandate is defined by law. So that's a legal education provider for the ATP program and other programs that it is uh, empowered to mount. So the teacher is separated from the examiner and the marker. We cannot mark the exam ourselves. We don't have capacity. And even if we had, there will be conflict of interest because the exam is ours. That's why we engage professionals to do it. I, I don't know of any professional examiner in the world who marks the exam themselves as opposed to the professionals. Because that's the only way you can ensure that the product, that, that it's a way of imbuing credibility in the examination, quality and credibility. Because if, if you are the setter, the marker, the remarker, the, the way we do it at the university, then of course, there would be challenges in a professional setting. Uh, but at the academic level, there are no challenges because you are being trained to be academically competent. But at the professional level, there, sh there should be some desegregation of duties and roles for quality assurance. Um, in terms of extra minutes to read the question, that is part of the three hours. We don't have extra time to read the questions, and they are not very lengthy. Some of them can be lengthy sometimes, but uh, they are not very lengthy that you waste a lot of time. It's what, if you are used to doing problem essays at the university, and that's what council encourages, you face the same stuff. Uh, but in our case, three hours are sufficient to do justice to those questions. So there's no extra time for reading the question. Um, change of, of examination center. Judge, uh, you address that one. Um, thank you, Dr. I don't want to say that it's not possible to change an examination center with the authority. We have exceptional cases where a need may arise and with consultation i think it can be possible but what is encouraged is you stick on the send you've been given 
because the materials for that sender have been taken care of. The candidate has been taken care of on that sender. Moving to another sender is likely to cause imbalance. And therefore, unless there is a real reason with the consultation, candidates are encouraged to stick to the examination sender for the reasons I've explained because of the personnel who have been allocated in a given sender, resources and other forms of resources that have been put in that particular sender. Disturbing that will cause an imbalance, but I don't want to say it cannot be done. On request, with good reasons, I think on merit, we can be able to attend to issues as they come. Uh, have we responded to other questions on that uh, score? Um, let me. Um, th there was a question around tax, tax law in commercial transactions as a new topic, and maybe a need mm. to allow calculators, for example. So, as of now, uh, the answer is not, not, not quite. Okay. Um, because we have the, we have the syllabus. Remember. Yes. And uh, we, we, we will see the exam when time comes. If need be, that will be communicated early enough. Okay. Yes. Th that's okay. And, and just sticking around the commercial transactions, uh, our WhatsApp groups, and um, I've even seen several questions around commercial transactions, and students are saying that um, if you, uh, th th it appears that there is no commitment as to the topics that will be set if there will be those from the course outline or it will be a, a, an exam that will basically accommodate all your clients, as you put it, uh, that will get back up to 2016. And in, in effect, what that will mean is there will be a disadvantage because then there are topics that were scratched. So is there a commitment that the, co that the course outline will be followed as is or students are supposed to go out past the course outline in preparation? <laughs> There will be no question outside the course outline. Okay. If there, are, if there are topics that are, are not in the course outline today, they are not examinable. Okay, that, that, that's yes. good then. Yeah. At least we have that commitment. Now I think I'll just finalize with, uh, I have four more questions, then we'll be done. Um, Regarding the exam, uh, and especially on COVID, there's a question around why you're not doing an online examination with this third wave. Number two, an, sticking uh, an online exam. Why are you not offering online exams with, in view of whatever is happening around COVID? Then the That's why I can dispose of very quickly. is because sure. we don't have the capacity of the, as of now. We have no capacity. Correct. We don't have to deliver that one. Okay. And... Uh, and Sorry. Proceed. Ah, okay, so I, I just wanted to keep the, the, the conversation around COVID so that we dispense of it, with it completely. Uh, okay. Around masks, will the masks, can students, now that they will be socially distanced, can they put them down during the, the sitting of the exam and then put on when <laughs> they take out or they have to be masked all through? A student actually said it gets hot in a mask uh, continuously for three for three hours. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the next question. Sorry, you have not responded though. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, well, um, um, I am in the office and I removed my mask when um, when the meeting started. That's when I remove my mask. So we will not permit anybody to to be in an exam room without masking. Everyone must be in a mask throughout the exam duration, including the invigilators. Okay, that that's what order. Thank you. And yeah. uh, regarding again a COVID nineteen related question is. Uh, is there a plan for those who fall sick? And as, as Mr. George has indicated, there will be an ambulance to take people to hospital. What happens to those who are admitted? Is there uh, a plan for that too? What type of plan? Um, for example, are they able to do exams 
in, in the hospital are they will be will they be able to defer that exam at that no, point if, or yes if, if a candidate gets sick during an exam then uh, that is a ground for deferral and it's so clear that it is not contestable but again following a sick candidate to the hospital to administer an exam that is that is not good if the candidate is not in hospital they get sick during the exam then the, the, the exam is deferred thank you thank you yes. and then on the deferral of exams uh, i've received a follow-up question can people defer specific exams or you have to defer the whole of it um yeah that, that, that is the question then another one is when will they expect to receive the results of the exam then uh, around it uh when is the when are you uh, planning to sit the next uh, uh, round of exams and then the final question from my end would be uh, what are the, the individuals whose loans, help loans have not been disbursed yet um, and, and have might, is there, is there a plan to ensure that it gets before the deadline and what happens if that is passed after the deadline? Yes. Um. Maybe I can tackle the um, defer one or all of them. You don't have to defer all of them. You can defer one or two because you have a reason. You defer the, the number you want to defer because of the gravity of your reason. If it is unwell and you think deferring all of them is the best option for you. Remember, you are deferring yourself. You defer all of them. If you are unwell, but you feel you can do one, defer the others, do that one. It's, it's a student's discretion. Council cannot interfere with that. When the results will be released, that will be affected by the, the COVID situation because it will affect our timelines. But we'll do our best to release them within the, the... We have three months maximum duration within which we must release the results. So from the date of the last paper, three months, hopefully we should be able to beat that deadline. Uh, help loans, George will deal with that. Next series of the exam. Right now, we are not focusing on the next series, no. We are on this series only. Remember, we have never held the exams in April. These are, are unique circumstances with all the peculiarities. So we cannot uh, start talking about the next series of the exam when the current series has not even taken place. That will not even be putting the the cut before the horse. There'll be nothing before the cut. Uh, there'll be nothing before the, the horse. Because we don't have a cut already. George, hail Bruns. Uh, thank you, Tector. I don't know whether Mary is on. She's our chair. Uh, if she's not, um, the... she's on. Uh, if she's on better, she can respond. If Mary's not in, I think I can respond. Um, Proceed. The, sorry? Proceed. Yes, about the help loans. The committee which is charged with dispersing that loan has even met today and the, it has agreed the last form to reach it will be on Wednesday uh, this week. We are closing up the um, receiving of forms 
So the latest, it should be Wednesday this week. And they said they only need one day to have the same dispersed. And once you have been awarded, we've been in touch with the help uh, offices. They quickly get in touch with our ICT department and the beneficiaries are notified about the status of their loans. So nobody will be awarded uh, the loans after Thursday. And those who have applied, they should be assured that the forms We've had like four forms here that have been taken today. Latest to be Wednesday to give them room to process. And once they have processed, they should be able to communicate immediately to the beneficiaries and our ICT will enable the system to allow them to register before uh, the closure of registration on 26th. So that has been taken care of. Any other question? Um, yes, two more. Um, uh, please ask about the error in uploading documents. What happens if we get to the deadline and they have not yet sent the rejection email to allow us amend the document? The documents uh, does it invalidate the entire registration? Uh, then uh, there's an, Barasa asks if it becomes hot, can you remove some of the heavier clothing you have? Uh, and then the last one would be. There's a, there's a question on if your registration is not approved and you've already paid, what's the way forward? That, that's it, Dr. Maybe you could respond to this one. Well, I cannot respond to uploading, but we, um, we, we work on the assumption that if you are a current candidate at the School of Law, You are there as, as a bona fide candidate. You meet the qualifications for the school. So that the application process should be complete in terms of the documentation you are required to upload. Of course, if technology fails, it to be dealt with. In other ways, that is, if 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 the circumstances led that that way, and uploading is completed impossible. Remember, it's before the exam; it has to be uh, in the course of this month or early, very early next month. This, uh, this that's an issue that will be resolved. So it is important that uh, we are satisfied with the uploading of documents from uh, from your end. Our students, heavy clothing. Well, you should, as a candidate, you should dress comfortably, very comfortably, so that you don't have a lot of heavy clothing. Because it may be cold that time, I'm not sure, or, or rainy. But of course, if you have heavy clothing, you are, you are at liberty to remove them to ensure that you are comfortable if it's already hot. If you have already paid and the application is rejected, assuming that that were an eventuality, then you get back your money. If it came to that, that's very rare actually. But if you did come to that, the money is yours, it has not been used. Question I have it, it, is, so the last thing I have mentioned is that it is it is the duty of the candidate to ensure that uh, all is well on their side, that they can upload whatever is required to be uploaded. When they get to printing the exam card, uh, if there are any challenges, they should alert us as quickly as possible so that collective action is taken. Um, as I say, this is a new system. And uh, I even mentioned, to, to repeat myself, 
that's the way to go. And the next step is having online examination. That has been a challenge even to very, very developed nations of this world, having online ex by examination has been a challenge to even developed jurisdictions. So it's not something you, run, you rush to. The universities rushed to online examinations. I know uh, it is chaotic, if, if I can give it a word, at the university level, it has been chaotic. And well, those academic exams, they are not professional. Um, where lecturers are in control here, somebody has to be very, very accountable for whatever goes on. So we cannot rush to online exams for the sake of doing it. We have to do it when we are satisfied that the system works, it is good, it is dependable, reliable, uh, and we still retain control of, of the process so that we don't, as it were, hand it over to, to equipment as well as other things. But it is the direction to go. We'll go there, but we'll go there slowly. Once we are assured that the system is safe, and dependable and reliable and can serve us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tari. There is a question. Uh, is a question that has been repeated. Uh, that please set out the list of examinative of social transactions so that there is no doubt. You have stated that there will be one paper with six questions for all candidates from 2016. And then I've received a question, can I carry water or sweets in the exam room? Then there is a question uh, around testing. Should Are we required to test for COVID-19 or, or during the exam? I think that's it from this side. And then the last question actually is, uh, will there be... Uh, when, when someone defers their, their exams, are their orals and project results preserved? And is there leniency in marking as we've studied in an unusual, unusual circumstances? That's what students say, yes. To deal with water in the exam room and testing and the oral and projects exam Water in the water. Water in the exam room. Can I bring water in the exam room? Yes. Are we required to test for what COVID nineteen? What happens to the oral and project marks when I defer and leniency in marking? Um. I begin with um, water in the exam room and the sweets and whatever sweeteners. If you have a medical condition, which you, you may be forced to uh, provide us with the documents that you require the drink at a shorter intervals, I think we should be able to allow you to come with it. If it's a medical case, which is supported by documents. Otherwise, three hours is not too long a time. Uh, um, we normally do not allow um, water being brought into the exam room. Some of the sweets, when you are unwrapping them, you can imagine the noise they make. Some sweets are wrapped with papers which are so noisy and therefore are likely to distract the attention of your colleagues who are not having the privilege of chewing those sweets. So to be fair to everybody, we would want to think that sweets, water, especially water particularly, we, with the medical documents, why not? We should be able to allow that. But where we don't have medical documents, normally we do not allow such in the examination room. And about the sweets, I've already explained. Uh, taking COVID tests, we shall have the medical personnel around. If somebody shows the signs that they are likely to be having, I think they should be able, the medical personnel should be able to guide on the best action to be taken. Um, orals and project marks are your marks. For as long as they are useful to you um, within the five-year rule, 
as long as you have not sat the paper, all first sittings of the paper, the marks are at your disposal. They are kept for you. And any time you sit the paper, they will be used. But they are never used on receipt at the moment. So um, that's about the oral and project marks. Uh, unless the Senate, I think, I think that's how I can react to the same. And, and maybe, Mr. George, while you're still at the exam centers, uh, yes. they're asking, is there a safe place in the exam centers where one can put phones and umbrellas? Um, we we provide, institutions provide where we do the exams. More often, there is a room which is provided. Sometimes some institutions, they put it in front of the classroom. We've had challenges like last year, but one, that's 2019, uh, 20 years, where it was in Pomas of Kenya. Uh, the candidates had put their belongings outside and... One candidate on finishing the exam forgot to pick their phone and pick the phone of another one, never to return it. I want to think it was a mix-up. And when the owner came after the paper, they were not able to find their phones. And therefore, that was not a very good scenario expected of officers at that level. So cases of people picking other people's items have been identified. And therefore, when it comes to personal belongings, we would want to put them strategically where people can be able to identify them before collecting what is theirs. Thank you. Could be the, um, the last one I could um, mention, and this would be the, the very last, is the question that I've been asked many times. See, in the setting of examinations, as long as the exam covers at least 80% of the syllabus, it should cover at least 80%. That's all. That's the threshold. An exam must cover at least 80% of the syllabus. The last question was on leniency in marking. Well, you'd be surprised. Our markers are very lenient. Even in the past, they are looking for marks. They are looking for places to give marks. And in very many situations, they get those places to give marks, depending on what the candidate has stated. Of course, in some cases, they don't get those places to give marks. Uh, in an exam, you are not supposed to be too brief. You can be as verbose as you wish. But in responding to the question, there is no limited number of pages you can write. You can be, you can write, you can write five booklets for every question, or one one full booklet per question. There is no problem. But it is dangerous to be too brief, as some candidates are sometimes. Anyway, that is the discretion of the candidate. And markers mark what is presented before them. And they have to mark every part of it, whether it's relevant or irrelevant. It is for them to determine that an answer is not relevant, but it must be marked. The candidate must be given a fair chance to pass. Thank you. Uh, just okay, to I'm tell sorry. the student yes, leader, yes. Emmanuel, yes, I proceed. that we, we encourage our candidates or our students, and you know, some prepare very short notes uh, to go through before the exam starts, that they don't forget such short notes into their pockets because it happens that uh, there is a temptation when you have forgotten your short notes into the pocket to want to reach for them for assistance in the examination. And our invigilators, during our invigilation, they move all over, that is the nature of the CLE exam. 
with so many invigilators in one room and they move all over, you may not be able to, one is not able to escape the eye of all of them. And when that happens, I think it becomes an examination irregularity and the process will begin for the same. So we want to encourage them that they don't write short notes and come with them in the examination. They should remember the others, even they think, when they are thinking, they write on their palms. I don't want to think they have written the Makenyas in their palms, but sometimes some read and write in their palms to remember. Um, such is checked before you enter. So we have risking. We have risking of candidates just to make sure you've not forgotten anything in your pocket, just to make sure you've not written some notes you've forgotten to wrap uh, before you enter the exam. Uh, we encourage the candidates to cooperate with our invigilators because they will only be earning what they are supposed to do for that earning. Thank you. Um, I, have, I, I have received again another set of questions, but I'm hoping that we can finish by three. Are we allowed to walk out of the exam room to respond to the call of nature? Uh, then there is a question around what is the rationale? We have there's lost a question. You. I uploaded the form. We've, we've, part of my ID. How do I amend it before I get rejected? Then there's a Martin. student who's called me and asked, um, they, they misplaced you. their they misplaced their KCSE certificate and they've requested NEC to send it directly to you. So how uh, how is he supposed to finish his, his registration? And then I have a question regarding LPM. Uh, are, are pencils allowed or it's restricted to pens in the exam room? And then are we allowed to carry sanitizers? I think that that's all from this side. I lost Man you personally. Manuel, we lost you from on the start, so we didn't get a lot of the first parts. Fomba, are you there? President. I'm, I'm here. I have realized that my call dropped. Yes, uh, yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear yes, you. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you heard my, the questions that I read. Yeah. I think you I repeat the I first read. two. Okay. So, the, the first two questions were from the chat. Let me just read them. Um... Just, just a moment, it's loading for But there was a question around the neck, the neck certificate, and that is supposed to be sent to CLE directly. Then, um, okay, just one moment, I should be there. Then are we allowed to use, well, you said the first two, the first two, okay, just, uh, I uploaded, I uploaded the front part of my ID. How do I amend it before I get, it gets rejected? Then are we allowed to walk out of the exam room to respond to the call of nature? Then what is the rationale of not using oral project marks in receipts? And then uh, CLE exams. Are CLE exams graded just pass or fail or the additions uh, to that? And then, uh, do markers deduct marks for site? Or, um, then do markers, I, I don't know if you had. Do markers deduct deduct marks for citing for students citing wrong uh, wrong provisions of the law? Then, if someone in your exam room tests positive for COVID. Will the rest of us in that exam room be asked to isolate and therefore defer our exams? And then uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a question around LPM. Are pencils allowed or it's strictly uh, pens? I think uh, that's it. I, I'm, 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 I'm hoping that I've, I've, I've been able to raise everything they have asked.
George, proceed. Uh, in the interest of time, Tektare, I want to talk about, uh, Wait, Daka will talk about the uploading of the certificate, the Form 4 certificate, and uh, the wrong uploading. I will want to quickly rush through the working out of the examination. Uh, that um, candidates are supposed to be seated 15 minutes before the start of the examination, and they have to take they have to take um, a minimum of one hour in the exam uh, before they can be able to seek permission to go out. But with cases where people have medical situations, um, people have medical situations and they have documents to that effect, we deal with them individually because they often inform us in time and we see them strategically uh, so that they cause a minimum uh, disruptions. So the essence of people not of coming in or going out, of course you have to seek permission, it is to avoid disruptions. You know, when people are moving and you are doing an exam, it disturbs the others. But after the first hour, um, you can always raise your hand and you can be guided accordingly by the supervisor of that room. So it is taken case to case, but we have medical cases where people have documents. We cater for them by placing them strategically so that they can be able to attend to nature as need be. Um, pencils being allowed in the exam, I don't know why you would want uh, to have a pencil because it's written on the booklet, the type of pen you should use, use black or uh, use the uh, blue pen. So you can do your rough work and the cross. You know, we don't, the, the markers don't mark cross to work. You can use your pencil to do rough work, but when writing your answer, strictly stick to the pen prescribed, not a pencil um, uh, is allowed. So stick to the pen which is allowed, but you can use your pencil to do rough work or you can do rough work with the ink pen and cross the work because cross the work is not marked. Waidaka can quickly talk about the, um, uh, the uploading of the certificate from NEC and the, the wrong side. site. Okay, thank you. Let me say generally, it is true we are having charities with the uploading of documents. And I think the main problem is that uh, the candidates are trying to use shortcuts. If it is the ID, they know it is supposed to be both sides. Somebody can scan using PDF and have the ID as one document with both sides. If it is transcripts to uh, upload the transcripts, they are supposed to be four transcripts. They can be in, be in one document or even separate. Some are just putting one. The Kenya School of Raw Data is supposed to be the complete letter with the three pages. Some are just using to put one page. So I, would, I think it's not really difficult to have the documents uploaded. The other one is the photo. If somebody takes a, a photo using a digital camera or even a phone, they can upload it. Some are using shortcuts. They get a passport, they had to take a, a, a hard copy one, they scan it. So ideally they are supposed to upload a digital photo, which they have taken using a good camera, and it will be uploaded. So we are having challenges agree with approval because very few candidates are following what is supposed to be put. So there are very few documents. Because for an ordinary, for most candidates, there are only six documents, the photo, the ID, the letter, the certificates. So I think if, if we are all to also use the right format, like the ID we have noted, some of you are just taking a photo with, the, uh, with your phones and uploading it. But that should not be the way. They're supposed to scan it properly, both sides, and have it uploaded. Otherwise, we are not going to block anybody. 
because they have not they have encouraged the prudent. The next certificate, I've also there are people also who are not approving the right documents. If it is the next certificate, it's supposed to be a certificate. Some of you are approving transcripts. And this is also a, it applies to all other documents. If you say it is a university certificate, when we open it, it should be a university certificate. So we have realized a few candidates are attaching inappropriate documents. That is document which is not meant to be approved for that particular item. For the one who have paid for NEC to bring the results, we will approve. NEC does not take long to bring those results. Once we get the results confirmed, we are going to approve that application. So there is no problem. For those who are putting the resort slips, please put the right document. The KCSC. Um, <clears throat> on the question of deducting of marks, that does not arise. No mark is deducted from a candidate for the wrong answer. Number two, the candidate tests COVID in the exam room, that is not possible because we shall not do tests in the exam room. If a candidate falls sick or ill, we don't know the problem. The medical staff will tell us the best cause of action outside the room. And we cannot, as it were, say it is COVID or pneumonia or whatever it is. So the exam will go on if a candidate gets unwell. Um, I just, just to let you know, um, last Saturday but one, last Saturday but one, a young man collapsed uh, as he was, he was reading. He's doing one of the readings in church. It's not a story I'm telling I was there. Uh, I'm not doing that to say that I go to church, but at least on this day I was there. And the young man, when he stood to read, read one sentence, the second one, he collapsed at the pulpit. Um, so, of course, there was, fortunately, there were two doctors in the congregation. He was taken outside and um, he was stabilized within 10 minutes. No ambulance was called. Um, and he just relaxed until the end of the, of the service. So you can't tell what it is until the person is subjected to a medical examination. Exams are pass or fail. But of course, you know the school rewards best performers in the particular units. The school honors the best performers in the exam. So it's also good to pass well. Lastly, on what is the rationale? Well, this is a decision I council made. I mean, I don't know how many years ago, I was not there, that oral and project might be used only for the first sitting. In my thinking could be is because in subsequent sittings, the candidate is only redoing the examination part, which is a right under the law. Our regulations permit that. Could be that for the reason. Could they are not redoing the other units. Until that, that changes and could change. We are doing the new uh, legislation for the examination. That could change. And for the better, if you ask me, and it will be to the, to the advantage of the candidates. But that policy is not changing right now, now that we are deeply involved in the legislative process. The draft regulations have been done, and they are due for, for public participation and, and being forwarded to Parliament later in the year, or as soon as they are ready. So I think... I think we have done justice to that last bunch of questions. Um, I don't know whether you, you the, the president and the students are still going to class. 
catch up. Yes, we are. I leave it to the uh, moderator, Anne. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kageri and the team. I believe all the questions have been answered and I don't expect to receive any more questions because normally I'm the one who is being asked all sorts of questions. So uh, it has been a fruitful uh, afternoon. I want to thank everyone for the patience uh, and the lecturers whose classes have been eaten into. Uh, I hope we'll find some time before Friday to make up. I just want to take this opportunity to wish everyone, uh, all the students, all the best in the incoming examinations. On behalf of myself, on behalf of the director, the board, and the entire school, we are rooting for you. We are praying for you. We'll be happy. We are usually happy when you do well. So we are praying that you will pass. Um, just some advice I normally dish out that uh, there's nothing new under the sun. So no one is going to invent questions that, uh, you know, we've never heard of. So keep revising, keep looking at the past papers. The people who mark exams are human beings. They are not machines. They are not angels. So just do your best. Read as much as you can. Uh, sacrifice for the next three or so weeks. You can just make sure you read every day. And then after that, you can do whatever you want. And being our first unique class to have gone through the online learning, all the more why we wish you the best. And we know that you will excel. We know that you will do the best. Um, on issues of project work, let me just mention that we have received the several questions and concerns. We are compiling them and a common response will be given, one response. So don't call me, don't text me, don't write me an email to remind me of a question you've asked or a missing mark you've raised. All that will be answered through one communication. We are not going to attend to uh, each individual case on its own. Each case will be attended to, but the response will come as a global response so that everybody will get their response at the right time. Um, and just to also confirm what Dr. Gakiri has said, we normally reward the best students. So work hard. If you're the best overall or you're the best in any specific subject, you will get a reward. The school will do that. So just to wish you the best and a good afternoon. I think you can go back to your classes. I believe ICT has sent the links for the various classes. Thank you, Gakiri. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.